welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be dividing this Cattleya orchid. This one is a very vigorous orchid that I have here. I up-potted it with you guys about a year and a half ago. The ID is the Potanera Barana Beauty Barana, and this one's very easy to grow. I'm going to talk you guys through how to divide a Cattleya orchid, what to look for, and some different approaches you can take. If you guys like this kind of video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more orchid content. Let's jump right in. So the first thing we're gonna do with this orchid is get it out of the pot. I watered it a bit um, just to saturate this. And because it's a terracotta pot, sometimes it's a little harder to remove. So I have a butter knife that I'm gonna use on the sides to try to free any roots that are stuck, just to kind of like get them out. I don't wanna break this pot. We might lose a couple of um, roots, but hopefully not. So I'm going to try to see if I can slowly loosen it up. So I will fast forward here while I try to get this out of this pot. Ah, and there was no need to fast forward. It came out just fine. So we didn't lose too many roots here. Um, some usually get stuck on the edges of the pot, but it came out kind of cleanly. So we are going to remove all of the media and get it ready for its new pot. And I'm gonna show you how to divide this up. When I potted this orchid up with you guys, um, I up potted it and I, I believe I took it from out of its old pot and just put it in this new pot. So we're gonna have a lot of dead roots here that we're gonna cut up and clean off. We have a lot of roots on this side, which is pretty nice. I remember I just surrounded it with pieces of coconut husk. This worked out fine. It's clearly growing really nicely. Now, this orchid, the blooms are yellow and red. The blooms are not my favorite blooms, but what I love about it is the fragrance. So it smells like a tea rose. It's really nice. Um, except towards the end of the bloom cycle, the fragrance changes a little bit, but when it first opens, it's a really nice, pleasant fragrance. It's quite easy to grow as well, so I find that it's vigorous. It's compact. I should have added this to my favorite compact orchid list because it's just easy, you know? Um, so we're gonna loosen this up. This one's a little hard because we have a lot of firm roots here, but husk is actually quite easy to remove, which is great. This is a nice root system, isn't it? Isn't that nice? Let's see. Let's get in here. And I will fast forward here while I clean this up. This is looking better. So I'm gonna rinse this off to try to help me get the rest of the media that's up in there, but we have a lot of dead roots. So you could tell the roots are dead when you squeeze them and they're hollow, they look like this. The roots that are alive look like this. Sometimes they're brown and they're alive, but if you squeeze them and they're hollow, that means they're dead. So I'm gonna just cut some of these off um, just to make my life easier and just get some of this stuff out of the way. So this is down here, that's hollow. So you could kind of see like there's nothing here, there's no substance. This part is alive, but the bottom was dead. So I'm just cutting just above where it's alive to not introduce a new wound to the orchid. And generally the roots that are closest to the older growth, so down here, are the ones that are gonna be dead. So we're gonna just remove them. If they're dead, if not, we keep them. Let's see, got a couple more here. Okay, now removing some of those roots, we could see some more of the media here, and that's fine. Okay, there we go, we got a big pocket here. So I do remember up potting this because it was just a nightmare. And as I suspected, a lot of these roots are now dead. So I'm glad I up-potted it. I just covered it in coconut husk and it worked out quite well. And look, this media still hasn't broken down. It was um, 
three years and it was orchiata bark and the stuff is still like decent like it, it's it crumbles no nah, it doesn't even crumble it still has substance but the stuff will last you for years like it's still here anyway we're gonna keep cutting some of these old roots and what I do want to talk to you guys about in dividing cattleya orchids is that there's two things that you can do with the cattleya orchids so when you're dividing you want to make sure that there's a new growth where you're dividing so this orchid here has two different growths so I can cut where the new growth you see how it has new roots I can divide it so that the new root system of each growth will take over each pot and that's okay so that's what you want to look for you need at least three different canes ideally you want four or five the more canes you have the more energy the plant will have and the easier it will be to establish and that's great so you want a new growth another approach that you can take when dividing your cattleya orchids is you can get rid of the back bulbs so these don't have any new growths on them so we can cut them off and if you take off the back bulbs sometimes there's a dormant eyes along the um the rhizome of the plant so sometimes those dormant eyes will swell up and grow a new growth that's not guaranteed though if you do have growths like this they will grow and they'll be fine this is not a guarantee. If you take off the back bulbs and pot them up, you may not get the swelling. But something that you can do is when you have the orchid potted up, you can cut the rhizome right in the pot from the back bulbs and see if it'll trigger the swelling of the nodes and then you can repot it. So that's a trick that some growers use to make sure when they're dividing their cattleya, they have a new growth and they have more success. Let me know down in the comments if that made sense to you guys. In this case, I'm gonna divide this orchid into two to put the new growth in each pot, and it should be fine that way. So I have a new growth here and I have a new growth back there. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this right here. This is always like the tough part. Let's get in there. I just don't wanna cut roots, but we may lose some anyway. So we're gonna cut right in there there we go now I have to be careful because these roots are gonna be like uh, we're gonna lose some they're just so firm here so I'm gonna just keep working on this and come back Okay, we're almost done here, but we have roots that are wrapped on both sides and it's a little frustrating. So I'm just gonna cut the ease. We're gonna have a few casualties, but I'm not too concerned because we have a lot of roots. So I know it's a new root, but like we need to get this separated and there we go. So now we have two different plants. So I'm gonna rinse this off and then clean off some of the rest of these bad roots. Let me actually clean them off right now so you can kind of see them. They don't look so great. They're hollow. Yeah, you can see they're kind of papery. So I'm going to take off the bad ones. The good ones are the white ones. Some of the brown ones are alive, as I mentioned, but you want to check to see if they're hollow and just cut them off. So I'm going to do that and come back with two clean plants and we're going to pot them up. The roots up and we're going to get started in potting this up. You'll notice that the older um, the cattleya with the older growths here had more roots that needed to be cleaned up because these are the original old roots. And then the um, newer part of the orchid, this has all new roots, so I didn't really have to cut anything off on this side. I'm gonna give this one away. We've got one, two, three, four, five growths here. This is gonna take off really well. I'm going to put it in a five inch pot. This should be enough. It came from a five inch pot, so just a heads up when you're dividing. 
Sometimes the root system will get to the depth of the old pot and it's not very um, flexible here. So you're gonna have to use a bigger pot sometimes. For this one, I'm gonna keep this, but I'm thinking of getting rid of the last couple of growths here. So I'm just gonna cut off like this piece here, just to save space. And we're gonna get rid of this. So I've cut that out and we're gonna go move forward with this part of the plant and we're gonna put it up. So let's start with the plant that I'm giving away. I'm gonna put it in this five inch pot and I have some bark and sphagnum moss here. So I'm going to take my moss and I'm going to gently put some on the bottom. We're gonna do a ratio of, I don't know, maybe 30% moss to 70% bark. So we're gonna do that on the bottom. And then we're gonna add a little bark here. And then we're gonna add our orchid. And this should really take off. I have someone in mind for this orchid here. Some newer orchid growers, and I think this will be nice and vigorous for them and do quite well. We surround it and put bark all around. Get it in there. And this will last them for at least a year so they won't have to repot any of this. You normally want to position the um, old growth towards the back and then the new growth towards the front. This one pushes nodes from all over, so we'll see about that. I'm going to put the um, older growths more back here. You can push it all the way in the back, but we risk if a new growth comes in, it'll push out. This one's a little unpredictable. Okay, let's add a little more moss. little pieces like we're gonna take the strands and open it up this is just to make sure that there's more moisture in the pot oh I broke a root it's okay I'm gonna put this all around just keeps more moisture it makes it more forgiving when we go without watering it's up to you you could do bark you can do leka you can pot your orchid up in whatever you'd like just test different things to see how it works for you in your environment I tried Lekka for a while, and in the long run, I didn't like it, so I'm switching back to Bark. But you guys do whatever works best. I suggest you do some trial and error. Well, I definitely used less moss than I thought I would. It's fine. Get this in here. I'm gonna put a support stake at some point at the end and bundle these all together before I give it away. And this should be good. And there we go. This one is all done. Let's do the last one. So I'm actually gonna use the same pot from before for this. No need to disinfect it, just given that it's the same orchid. So I'm gonna put some moss on the bottom. I'm gonna go a little heavier on the moss with the clay pot because clay is wicking and dries faster. We're gonna get some bark in there. And then this time we're really gonna position that older growth towards the back so the newer growths can come in towards the front. Again, like I said, this orchid's a little unpredictable. It may swell over here and grow, but we'll take that chance. Safe bet sometimes is just to center it. We're gonna layer that bark in here. Some people don't like terracotta pots and I get comments all the time like, oh no, you're using a pot that's not see-through. And I'm just like, you know, I get it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to use a pot that, if you could only use see-through, that's fine. Um, but terracotta is a pretty safe bet because it is so wicking and it makes sure that if you water a lot, that water kind of comes out. Now that's a con too because that means you have to water more often. That's why I'm going a little more heavy handed with the moss in here um, because these just dry out so fast. So if you are on the fence about using a pot that's not see-through, terracotta could be a good choice. You're not able to see the roots, but trust me, this wicks moisture out a lot 
and it's really hard to overwater. Now if you're using 100% moss and you're watering every single day, saturating it, then, then maybe, but it's very hard to overwater a terracotta pot. Notice the growths are on this side. This is going to allow the orchid to grow on that side. I do risk getting a, a node here, but this should be okay. Given that this is an older growth, I don't see it happening. So it should grow towards that direction. I keep putting some bark here. I'm gonna press it down in there. And I hope this lasts me two years because quite frankly, I'm repotting so much these days, it could be a little frustrating. <laughs> it's not frustrating, it's just a chore. I love my orchids. Just don't get so many. Manage your collection so that you don't have as many as I do because then it can be tiring. So just keep what you enjoy and share what you don't really enjoy, you know what I mean? We're gonna leave bark on top. And this should be good. Perfect. We are all set. And we are good to go. So we are all set. And I'm very happy with how this came out. I'm keeping this one. And this one will grow quite nicely. Very vigorous. Hopefully it grows to the right. And doesn't give me growth on the left. And this one is going to a friend. They live right here in my neighborhood, and I think they're going to enjoy this one because it blooms so often, so hopefully they get their first Cattleya bloom with it. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have any questions, and thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.